right, so let's uh, go ahead and look at what Cantor uh, posited, okay? We're going to look at it in three steps. We're going to look at, um, and we're using 2 to the power of all if not uh, rise at C and not 10 to the power of all if not because, well, in set theory, uh, if you're going to talk about the per possible permutations of a set, a member of a set will either exist or not, okay? And that would be binary. It wouldn't, there would be 10 possible answers to that. So, and that's okay because 2 to the power of all if not is the same as 10 to the power of all if not. There's no fundamental problem here. Well, this has been accepted among mathematicians. By the way, C is the continuum. That means all possible real numbers, including transcendental numbers. So uh, again, all if not would be the level of countability of rational numbers and algebraic irrational numbers like, let's say, the square root of 2 or phi or the square root of 5. That those would be included within the all if not level of countability, but C would include numbers that are truly transcendental or that are not algebraic, and those would effectively be all real numbers. That would be uncountable with respect to all if not. Okay, so 2 to the power of all if not being C is uncountable with respect to all if not. Now these two positions are accepted among mathematicians. Now, what I call CH, meaning the continuum hypothesis, that is not accepted among mathematicians. Although Cantor believed in it fervently and pursued the answer to it uh, his whole life. And some say that drove him insane. I, what is sanity? What is insanity? That might be a whole new YouTube video we could do some other time. But uh, he posited that 2 to the power of all if not arrives at all if all if one, we'll call it, which would be the next level of countability above all if not. Well, he posited that all if one and C are the same thing. In other words, what he's saying is that there is no level of infinity between all if not and C. That essentially what we have is a step by step is, is that all if not arrives at C. And then if we took C to the power of all, if not, we would have a level of countability above C, which we won't be going into in this lecture. And then that could possibly go on, uh, but that we, what we have is between all, if not, and C is no possible levels of countability between all, if not, and C, that we can exclude those. Now, this has not been accepted among mathematicians. In fact, uh, Paul Cohen proved that the continuum hypothesis, in other words, the belief that uh, there are no levels of infinity between all if not and, and C, or between the infinity of the natural numbers and the infinity of all real numbers, he proved that that is undecidable with respect to set theory. Now, let me show you some references. I'm going to bring some books here. Um, Why don't we zoom over here? Okay, this is um, Paul Cohen's set theory in the continuum hypothesis where he lays out, it has his arguments uh, laid out here in this book. It's, it's rather difficult reading, okay, but it is accepted among mathematicians that the, that the continuum hypothesis is undecidable with these axioms of set theory that you will have laid out here. Now, the other reference I want to show you would be um, easier reading. Uh, by the way, this, by calling this Cohen's work difficult reading, I'm not implying that you shouldn't read it. <laughs> you should read difficult reading because that is good for the mind. However, if you want something that's very breezy and really very good, I would suggest The Mystery of the Aleph by Amir Axel. Uh, Amir Axel makes a, uh, it does a very compelling, it's somewhat of a biography of Cantor, it's also somewhat of a biography of the history of set theory. Um, it combines all these things into one, and it is written very, very well. The Mystery of the Aleph by Amir X. Okay, cut.